Yeah. Hi friends, my name is uh, Natras. In this video, I am going to talk the definition of spring. If you observe other video, there I talked certain terminologies of spring definition. Uh, in this video, I am going to cover remaining terminologies of what spring definition. But let us summarize what I have talked in other one, other video which, which I called as part one of spring definition. So, there I talk about spring is an open source, lightweight, loosely coupled, aspect oriented, dependency injection based Java application framework to develop various types of what? Java application. This is the official uh, definition including various terminologies uh, related to spring definition. That day I used one word open source. Spring is not only free. When I install Spring Framework, you will get its source code. We will get its source code. That makes Spring is an open source framework. And lightweight uh, towards the size of the software, it is lightweight. Uh, towards uh, the containers we use in Spring, definitely it is lightweight. So, in all terms, it is what? Lightweight. The way we develop uh, spring beans as ordinary classes, uh, lightweight. So, in n number of angles, we can call spring is what? Lightweight. Loosely coupled, loosely coupled. Uh, degree of dependency among the spring module is very less. So, this makes spring as what? Loosely coupled. When we go for spring programming also, we prefer interface model programming that also makes spring loosely coupled. But that is a technical aspect, but for the time being, so the degree of dependence among the spring module is very less. That means, we can develop spring application either by using one module, two modules or multiple modules. So, if you want to use one module, there is no need of arranging what other module, even jar files are given like that. You need not to arrange all the jars every time. You can arrange those jars in which you are interested in. So, that makes spring as what? Loosely coupled. Aspect oriented. Um, in object oriented programming, we mix a primary logics and secondary logic. Due to this, Claude looks very clumsy. Number one. Number two, uh, secondary logics will not become reusable logics. Number three, without disturbing primary logic, there is no provision of what? Enabling or disabling secondary logics. So, this makes a uh, problematic situation. This creates problematic situation. So, as a solution for this problem, we go for aspect oriented programming where there is a provision, where there is a provision, there is a possibility of what? Separating primary logics from what? Secondary logic, but we can mix them dynamically at what time? A run time with the support of one or other AOP enabled software. So, this gives uh, certain advantages. What those advantages? In the main class or business method, only primary logics will be available, number one. Secondary logics are reusable. We can enable or disable secondary logic without disturbing the source code of what? Primary logics. Because of all these things, yes, Spring is having tremendous response in the market. But let us talk one more terminology which I have violated in the definition that is what? Dependency injection. What is this? Dependency injection. Before explaining dependency injection, I must talk about dependency lookup. Do not think in technical aspect because I am trying to exp explain conceptually. We will see in the coming videos how to implement all these concepts technically with the support of SWOT spring dependency lookup. First, I will explain what is dependency lookup, then we will go for what is dependency injection. Dependency lookup. If one component needs another component, if first component is spending time to search and gather it is a dependent component, nothing but another component, then it is called what? Dependency lookup. If main components needs dependent component, if main component is spending time to search and gather Spending time means writing some logics in the main component. To search and gather it is a dependent component from other resources of the application or other resources of the project, then it is called dependency lookup. 
that means here what should I say main component gets dependent component okay by searching for that component main component contains logics to search and get dependent component what do you mean by main component what do you mean by dependent component main component is also called as target component and a dependent component is also called as slave component for example vehicle needs engine vehicle is main component engine is dependent component if vehicle is spending time to search and gather engine component to use engine in the vehicle then uh, that is called dependency lookup flipkart news Flip, flipkart is you know india's number one online shopping portal okay it needs uh, courier service support because to deliver the products definitely to deliver the product it needs courier service support so if flipkart uh, using the services of courier service your courier service like blue dart dtdc are called what dependent components and flipkart is called what main component or target component in dependency lookup main component searches for the dependent component that means for that purpose main component should write the logics so let me give one non technical example student is a main component course material is a dependent component student asked for the course material then okay the training division has supplied that course material so then student is getting his dependent object called course material through dependency lookup so this is what non technical example what is this student getting course material by requesting for it example to let me give technical example the way we get data source object by talking to jnd registry comes under what dependency lookup dependency lookup what is this okay application class getting data source object from jndi registry how does this code looks here suppose i have application 1 dot java it wants to have a data source object that is there in the jnd registry whatever code we are writing this code is called dependency lookup code let's see initial context ic is equal to uh, tell me new initial context of this not only establish the connection with uh, underlying jnd registry it also provides base to perform lookup operation lookup is nothing but searching and getting the object so suppose this code is running in weblogic server because of this line it will establish jnd registry that is there in weblogic server everyone knows what is jnd registry whenever we have a certain service object service component and if you want to provide global visibility to that service object or service component generally it will be placed in what jnda registry and this initial context object represents connectivity with what jnda registry in the server where we are writing this code where we are executing this code let us assume this application one is running in which server web logic server so that establish the connection with what jnd registry of weblogic server and also provides base to perform lookup operation that means search operation see let me write the lookup code here data source ds type casting data source ic dot lookup what is that ds jnd ic dot lookup ds jnd it performs lookup operation yes it definitely performs what lookup operation and gets data source object from jnd registry and gives it so this code is called what lookup code 
So, this is also called what? Performing look, depends, dependency look upon what? Uh, JNDA registry and getting data source object. Here, what is target component, main component? Our application one class is target component or main component. What is dependent objects are? Data source object that is gathered from JNDA registry is called what? Dependent. You know that using this data source object, we can get uh, <coughs> connection object from JDBC connection pool. Fine. So, if you observe very carefully in dependency lookup, in dependency lookup, dependency lookup, main component pulls the dependent component, pulls, it searches and pulls the dependent component. Observe application one is the main component, it is searching and pulling uh, data source object, nothing but dependent object from JNDA registry or not. So, that is why um, here what? In dependency lookup, lookup, the main component searches and pulls the dependent component. Yes. Sir, what are the advantages and disadvantages? Advantage. Sir, is there any advantages? Yes, advantages are there. What is the advantage? Target component can get only required dependent components. Yes, unnecessarily things need not to get. Whatever it needs, it can get. Main component needs only courier object, gets courier object. Main component needs data source object, get data. Or another two, three object, gets it. It will not get any unnecessary objects. So, what is this? Main, main oblique target component can get and use only required dependent component. Disadvantages. Yeah. Let us uh, concentrate on disadvantages of dependency lookup. Disadvantage of dependency lookup is in main component or target component, we should write some logics to search and gather dependent component because dependent component will not come automatically to main component. We should write some logics. We should write some explicit logic to search and gather what? Dependent components. So, what is the disadvantage? Main oblique target component must have some additional logics to search and gather dependent objects. So, keep these points in mind. I am going to use these points while explaining dependency injection because I am going to compare both. But shall we start analyzing what is dependency injection? Let us start understanding dependency injection. In dependency injection, the underlying server or container or framework or runtime environment dynamically creates main object, dependent object and also assigns dependent object to main object and gives main object to us. That means, main object need not to have any special logic to do this. Everything is taken care by whom? Underlying container, server or framework or runtime environment. This is called dependency injection. Some part of industry also calls it as IOC inversion of control. Why it is called inversion of control? Generally, when main needs dependent, main has to search dependent and get the things. But here, who, what is happening? Someone else is doing this entire work and giving main object to us. It is a reverse of regular process or not, reverse of regular control, control flow or not. That is why it is called inversion of control. Inversion means reverse, inversion of control, reverse of regular flow, reverse of regular control flow. That is why it is called inversion of control. So, what is the definition boss? In, in this model, underlying server or container or framework or server, framework or what? Server dynamically assigns dependent class object 
to main class object and gives main class object to us. Due to this, main class need not to spend a time, need not to write logic to search and gather what? Dependent objects. Do not think that Spring does not support dependency lookup. Spring also support dependency lookup along with other technology Spring supports, but Spring great, great feature in Spring is it is having great support for dependency injection. In Spring, we can implement dependency injection in multiple module models. What are those models? I will come in a moment. First, let us try to understand dependency injection. What is this? Here, the underlying server oblique, container oblique framework dynamically creates main comma dependent class objects objects and assigns dependent class object to main class object main class you know that main class is also called target class object when in, uh, when it comes to dependency injection vehicle main class engine dependent class container only creates both objects ready and assign engine to vehicle object flip card and courier example Container only creates flip cart and what? DTDC class object, assign DT class objects to what? Flip cart object. So, ultimate conclusion is if I give layman example of dependency injection, layman example of dependency injection, the way material is assigned to student, the moment student joins for the course is called as what? Dependency injection. Who is doing this? the training division employee assigns material to the student the moment student join for the course. That means, student never demands for the material, never request for the material. The moment he is ready, he is assigned with what? Material. So, what is this? Assigning material to student when he registers for the course. Example 2. Suppose one faculty is there conducting classes. The moment he occupied the dais, okay, projector system is ready, mic system is ready, computer system is ready. Directly he can spend a time to deliver his lecture. So, that time these three are injected to the faculty or not. That is another non-technical example. But let me give technical example here. What is that? Technical. The moment JVM creates the object, constructor executes and automatically default values are assigned to the object or not. Automatically initial values are assigned to the object through constructor or not. That is also an example for dependency injection. The way constructor is executed to assign initial values to the object, the moment object is created comes under what? Dependency injection. What is that? The way constructor executes to assign initial values to the object when object is created is called dependency injection is called one dependency injection. I, th I hope you got a clarity on it. Yes, but the important point to notice over here is in dependency injection underlying server or container or framework pushes the value to the pushes the value to the main object. In dependency lookup main object pulls the values pulls the dependent values, but in what? Dependency injection underlying container or server or framework or someone else will dynamically push dependent value to the main object, dependent value to the main object. So, here underlying server, container and others okay, dynamically pushes the values to pushes dependent dependent objects to main oblique 
target object main oblique what target object so this is called dependency injection spring supports both dependency lookup dependency injection the greatness of spring is okay spring allows us to develop dependency injection in five modes so five modes of dependency injection in spring what are those what is this setter methods based setter injection nothing is there uh, dependent class object will be assigned to uh, what is this dependent class object will be assigned to main object by calling setter method that's why it is called as what uh, setter injection this is called setter injection next constructor injection here dependent class object will be assigned to main object through parameterized constructor execution that's why constructor injection see aware injection it is spring special injection here also called as what interface injection here main class implements from special interfaces some special interfaces okay they are called aware interfaces by seeing those aware interface injection by seeing that aware interfaces implementation container starts injecting some special objects that's why it is called aware injection also called interface injection i repeat i repeat here main class implements some special interfaces by seeing those special interfaces implementation underlying container some especially spring container dynamically injects what some dependent class objects that's why it is called aware injection okay then lookup method injection yeah we cannot understand conceptually here there are some technical issues with aware injection in order to overcome those technical problem that are there with what aware injection we have to go for what lookup method injection then we have got something called method replacer also called method injection also called method injection yeah what this says you know you want, you don't you want to execute new logic for business method temporarily and any moment you want to revert back to original logic then we can develop new methods in a separate class on temporary basis those logics will be executed whenever real called once work is done you can revert back to original logics for that purpose they have come up with what method replacer which is also called method injection also called as what method injection so let's go back to let's go back to advantages and disadvantages of dependency injection yeah what is the advantage the advantage over here is underlying container dynamically assigns the values to what underlying container or server dynamically assigns the values to what come on um, main object okay so that uh, main object need not to spend any time to search and gather dependent object to search and gather dependent objects okay next disadvantage the underlying container may assign both necessary and unnecessary dependent objects to main object because your main object cannot control what it wants everything is decided by underlying container or server so in this process container or server may assign what unnecessary objects yes or no container dynamically assigns dynamically assigns dependent objects to main objects container dynamically assigns dependent objects to main objects fine container may assign both necessary comma unnecessary objects to main object so these are the disadvantages see uh, 
I am not saying dependency lookup is bad. Whenever you feel that is great, go for it. Whenever you feel this is great, go for it. Let me create a situation here. You have a target class 10 methods. In all 10 methods, you need dependent object. Go for dependency injection. For example, engine is required in multiple methods of vehicle class. Go for dependency injection. No, engine is required only in one, two methods of, especially one method of what? Vehicle class. Go for dependency lookup. Simple and straightforward theory. Courier service is required in multiple activities of shopping, online shopping uh, application or Flipkart application. Go for a dependency injection. Go for a dependency injection. No, it is required one, two methods of what? One, two operations of what? Main class. I mean to say a Flipkart application. Then go for a dependency lookup. So, simple is very pretty simple. So, you want more visibility of dependent object in main class, go for dependency injection. You want visibility in one, two methods, huh? go for dependency lookup. Spring actually supports it, but maximum times we will try to take the advantage of what? Dependency injection. So, if you look at the definition, with this we completed what? Dependency injection terminology. Then what is their application framework? In one another video, I talk at different types of frameworks, web application framework, ORM framework, lot of frameworks I talk at. Spring is called application framework. It provides abstraction layer on multiple JSC module technologies, JWE module technology and some tools and some other frameworks that are there in the market like JUnit, Log4j and um, Hibernate kind of frameworks and simplifies what different kinds of applications development. That is why it is called as what application framework. What framework? Application framework. And there is a term called various types of Java application. Using Spring, I can develop standalone application, core Java style application. I can develop website. Okay, web application, I can develop distributed application, I can develop messages based asynchronous communication application, synchronous communication application, two tire application, three tire application, entire application, different different types of applications I can develop. That is why Spring is there to develop what? Various types of Java application. When I say Java application, not just standalone, both Java, JWE, web application, enterprise application, all kinds of applications can be developed by using what? Spring. So, this makes Spring more powerful. This makes Spring useful to develop different types of logic. Using Spring, I can develop a presentation logic, business logic, persistence logic, integration logic, services, secondary services, primary services, secondary logic, primary logic, everything is possible with the support of Spring. That is why we call Spring is a version. That is why we call Spring is a all-rounder framework. So, this is about various terminologies related to spring definition. So, please see this video along with part 1 so that you can get complete explanation about what all the terminologies that are used in what spring framework definition. Thank you.